Greetings, and welcome to Terra Prime Live. My name is Erock, and tonight uh, I'll be the host uh, for tonight's show. <laughs> Didn't quite work. And tonight's show is dedicated to our new uh, initiates uh, who are uh, experiencing uh, upcoming trials uh, for the uh, for entrance. So uh, entrance into the LX program. So tonight's show is about Shicho basics. Just the basics of Shicho, um, what, you, what you might find useful uh, for your trial. Uh, as such, we won't actually be talking uh, about the trials tonight. Quite frankly, we don't know about them. If you have a trial already, don't tell me, don't tell me here. Um, that's new to me, because uh, we were not informed. So that's how secret these things are, guys. Ergo, uh, we are actually useless in talking about the trials, because we just don't know about them. Uh, so, uh, I'd like to introduce the panel tonight. Uh, we'll start off with uh, some fellow uh, LX apprentices. Uh, that's my rank in TPLA. Um, joining us tonight, we have Darth Arcanis, Gary from the UK. Evening, Gary. Evening, Eric. Evening, everyone. Ooh, great to have you here, man. Good to be here. And just going to be all right with you, Lacey. Um, we also have Darth Saber. We have uh, Michael from Germany tonight. Welcome, Good night. How are you doing? <laughs> hey, thanks, man. Awesome, awesome that you can join us so late. <laughs> you too, Gary. And uh, also, um, we have another of our LX apprentices. We have Robert. Uh, Robert, I uh, can't remember your uh, your handle. It's Orinthius. And uh, hello. Good morning. Good evening. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I uh, hope everything's uh, still going well uh, with the uh, storm you're having there, Robert. And last but not least, of course, we would like to introduce uh, two of our uh, our initiates uh, here. First, we have Lacey. And, uh, yeah, hi, uh, welcome, Lacey. And, um, would you mind uh, telling us briefly a little bit about uh, maybe uh, just yourself, uh, your background, and maybe martial arts, uh, interest in sabers? Anyway, um, I am a college student right now. I am also a second degree black belt in Tagusina Mudokuman. And I've trained a little bit in Sword and Arnie's in the past. And I'm obviously a Star Wars fan, and I really enjoy lightsabers. So, so that's what brought me to be here. Excellent. I don't know, we uh, seem to be all be lagging out here. Um, <laughs> so if uh, we all just pause. <laughs> the internet has been slow all day, it seems. So uh, if there is uh, a poor quality to tonight's video, we do apologize. But uh, it is uh, the nature of the world tonight, <laughs> I guess. Uh, and also um, joining us tonight here is Russell, uh, who always asks questions, by the way. Uh, now. It is, uh, it is finally uh, great to see you here, actually, on the panel tonight, Russell. Welcome. Yeah, pleasure to be here, guys. Finally uh, got a chance to get on the video. A um, little background on me. Uh, second degree black belt in Choi Kwon Do. Um, I uh, hang out at the Ann Arbor Sword Club a lot, so I do a lot of modern fencing, modern saber, German longsword. So it's a little bit of my background. Nice hit here. Not going to be making any any enemies with the masters uh, with that type of background. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, I believe that uh, is pretty much the standard repertoire uh, from, from whence the material came. So, uh, yeah, man, be great, uh, great to have you aboard tonight. And, Thank uh, you. Both uh, Lacey, uh, Russell, your task tonight is to put us to task and make us do whatever you want us to see uh, in Shicho. Uh, we would like you to ask as many questions as you like. Uh, the viewers out there, um, if you have any questions as well, uh, if you go, um, see, I don't know uh, where you this, uh, if you're, you're probably watching this on the YouTube channel, I think maybe, uh, yeah, if you can um, ask um, ask questions on the YouTube uh, feed, of course, uh, we usually monitor that, and if you are looking at the video from Google, you'll notice we have the Q&A open, and uh, feel free to use the feature as well. Uh, we can see that... Uh, have uh, already a few questions there. So anyway, uh, welcome everybody. So let's uh, let's begin about Shicho. So uh, 
first thing, uh, it's, it is uh, the first form in the lightsaber combat um, system. It is it is base it is the basics of uh, everything that we, we do. It revolves around footwork. I'll, I'll drop that hint right off the bat. Uh, we're going to be starting with footwork tonight, uh, just because it is important that that happens pretty much first. Um, so, yeah, uh, just speaking from experience, I was always swinging a lightsaber around like the movies, but never paying attention to my feet. And as soon as I learned the feet, like 30, 30 years of, of having fun with this thing, I, I suddenly started growing again. So it's it. You both have martial arts background, so I'm preaching to the choir right now, but uh, on the panel anyway. Uh, out there, uh, if you don't have a martial arts background, I didn't either. So, uh, yeah, just it is definitely uh, important to be working on the uh, on the footwork. So we will be doing that. Okay. Um, there we go. Is that uh, is that better? Uh, mm. I think the video was uh, was stuck there. I think I had somebody click. Um, thank you, master. Anyway, uh, so talking about Chicho uh, and the basics, um, does anybody want to just uh, start off um, just with your basic thoughts about uh, Chicho? Uh, but... mm. There you go, Michael. Robert. Well, um, I'll sort of jump in first, and then obviously the other guys can sort of you know add on. Um, I mean, as, as we've discussed many times, Eric, I mean, Chicho is, it is the sort of basics of using the lightsaber, you know, um, and uh, it's it's just learning how to use it, what your guards are, what your strikes and parries are, and, and as you said, you know, initially, footwork, you know, that's the sort of, that's the main sort of thing, really, is, is learning how to move your feet and how to move your body, and it's it's kind of... In a sense, it's kind of a simple form because it is the first thing you learn, and then everything else kind of builds on top of that. So you know, it it, it is taking everything right back to basics, right back to the start, and and just learning it a little bit at a time, piece by piece, slowly, and then gradually, as your your smoothness increases, then your tempo also increases. That's right. Uh, it said uh, many times, slow makes fast. The only way to get fast is to uh, take slow. So. As we always say, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Weird. It's a, so, uh, it, it's so anti um, intuitive, uh, martial arts, I'm finding. Um, but once you get used to it and, and, and practice, like you would a musical instrument um, or just any kind of art or craft, um, it does get easier and it does start making sense. Uh, and then all of the stuff that you read before that didn't make sense suddenly didn't. Like, ah, you have an epiphany. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm not quite there yet, but uh, I'm getting there. Personally, um, uh, Michael, any uh, any quick thoughts on Chi Cho um, before we uh, begin some footwork? Uh, it's good that you can do it without any martial arts ex experience in the background. I started with uh, I started with zero. Uh, experience in martial arts and uh, Chicho was some kind of uh, uh, self-explaining and uh, the very basic stuff that you can learn in a couple of weeks. The very, the very, very, very basics, and uh, it was good for me. Here you go. Yeah, very right. good. Um, I'm going to add to that as well. I, when I did Chicho, I found that um, it's a lot about understanding how the saber works. It's basic. It's it's the simple things you're going to go back to. Uh, if you've been in martial arts, which it seems both of you have, you, you understand that the fundamentals are what you go back to when your brain locks up on the advanced stuff. It's the most important concept to me is that you understand your basics. You go back to root. You go back to form. And you get simple swings, simple blocks, simple steps, and it makes uh, it makes for a better experience by understanding your basics. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, but, uh, probably Michael uh, found out as well as as well as I did uh, firsthand is when you don't have those basics, uh, you notice that it just doesn't it, it just doesn't work. Um, you try as you might, it, you fall over. Yeah, it, it's 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 sloppy. <laughs> it's all about planning your feet. Um, it is your connection to the earth, and that's all you have. As uh, as Pastor Melvin said once, 
Um, let's uh, let's get into some footwork then. Um, I'm just going to adjust the camera so we can see that. There we are. So uh, yeah, as a result of as a result of Google being completely broken, uh, we don't have our, our lower thirds on right now, which is pretty good because uh, we never really have them on for footwork. So. Um, so, gentlemen, now what do you think we should do? Uh, we'll just start with the, the first stance in Shicho, uh, the Jedi Guard. Okay, so. Uh, uh, what uh, we were talking about, um, one way I, I, I learned uh, which makes a good foot positioning is uh, to do the, uh, the T method. So, uh, with the left foot, uh, if you are right handed, of course, uh, most of us are. Uh, with the left foot forward and the right foot back at a T, uh, basically lift up your front foot and just lean forward, and then just bend the knees a little bit. Um, so this uh, is your basic stance. Um, obviously, uh, we have our, our center, and you know, from that, it just this is a nice stable position. Uh, yeah, you can feel it if you're leaning too far forward or, or backwards. It's just just planting your feet and this is it, position one. Um, any comments, guys? Do you uh, do you prefer your weight more on the back foot or more in the middle? Um, what I'm doing right now um, is I, I sort of have a lot of the weight uh, more or less on the uh, on the back. Both of my feet are flat on the ground completely, um, and yeah, I can. Uh, I'm ready to uh, either shift the weight forward a little so I can jump back or. The other way. Uh, it just really depends on what, what, what you intend to do. Russell, I assume your uh, Taekwondo background allows you the, the 70 30 or 60 40 concepts for, for weight balance. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, my stance, I'm usually 60 back, 40 front. Okay. But a lot of people will argue 70 30 or even 50 50. Okay. Yeah, if I can just come in on that as well, because I have a, a Taekwondo background as well. Um, what I tend to find is that your your sort of guard position, um, if you're familiar with um, sort of L stance, kind of Nyonjo Sogi, uh, you're looking at your weight being predominantly on your back foot in, in, in that sort of guard position, in a defensive position. When you're going into your strikes and you're pushing your weight forward, you're looking more at a, at a sort of a, a walking stance or a front stance kind of uh, position, so your weight is coming onto your front foot, if that makes sense. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. So once we're in uh, position one, I guess. All right. Um, the next, uh, the, the first thing I would like to show you is uh, the uh, three, uh, the three-point step. And essentially, what that is, it's basically the, the first move in the duelon. It's uh, the first uh, step in the side strike. And what I'm going to do is touch my feet together and step forward. Just reverse it if you like. And again, touch. And there you go. So that's going to be uh, a very important thing and you can uh, keep going. Step forward and then touch again for the other way. And then reverse. And I'm Trying very hard, but maybe not showing that, <laughs> to not lean forward or backwards too much. I'm going to try to keep my knees bent here. I'm still an apprentice, guys. I'm still a student, too. Judging by the experience on the panel, uh, you guys could probably tell me what to do right now. Um, yeah, uh, so that's just the uh, the basic three-point step, and that's definitely going to get us through the, uh, the, the size range. We'll, we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, all right, uh, so that's uh, these, like, the commonest steps uh, you'll find in Inchi Cho. Uh, another thing you'll find is the hut slide. Uh, let me just show you the footwork from the from the side. Sorry, first. Um, okay. And touch together. Get ready for the next one. Okay. 
together, step forward. And every time, think about keeping your legs firmly planted on the ground at all times, just because you never know if you're going to have to react forward or backwards or, or, or spring. So um, a good rule of thumb, uh, which is helping me with this stuff a lot, is both legs always have to be ready at all times, uh, regardless of what you're doing. Um, yeah, reaction times, got to do it. It's faster than that, sorry. <laughs> so, so I can demonstrate that. Um, so, uh, comments so far? Uh, in the middle there, do you ever feel off balance? Uh, yes. Um, at first, it's getting a little bit better. Um, um, what, what tends to keep uh, solving that for me is uh, it's staying lower to the ground, keeping my center of gravity down, and then... It's really just a transitional step, too. Um, the foot really doesn't touch the ground at this point. It basically just taps. See if I can... Uh, what? Uh, the foot um, basically just touches and then transitions and then back over and then... If, uh, if there's a better way to do that, fellow apprentices, let me know, because that's, uh, that's, I'm showing you what I'm basically doing to, to get this done. But uh, there's, you know, I might not have all the answers here, guys. Again, I'm so stupid, too. Uh, does anybody uh, have anything to say at this point? I, I actually try not to emphasize the middle step or the middle of the step as much, because you want to keep your weight centered above your body, sure. Um, you want to also move through the strike, because that strike isn't designed to be subtle. Um, it's designed to chop something in half, mm -hmm. and you, you don't want to have that pause in the middle, because you lose a lot of that momentum. The, uh, the, that, that powerful bulldozer-type strike that you are talking about uh, begins with the foot. So, uh, right, 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 and any time you stop that strike with your feet, you stop some of the power of that strike. Yes, sir. Okay, um, I guess um, uh, we need to show the uh, the hut slide, and we'll do a uh, the do back rider, I guess, and then uh, we'll move on to some guards. Uh, out there, if you have any questions, again, uh, please post them away on the Q and A. Uh, we will answer them for you if you'd like. And um, yeah, panel, chime in at any time here. Um, in fact, uh, if you guys just want to drill me, that that'd be pretty cool too. Uh, let's do the. Um, I leave the drilling of you to Lacey and uh, Russell because they're the ones who are learning this more than me. Yeah, that is a brilliant idea. Sir. Uh, anything, guys? Um, okay. So uh, another uh, another very uh, common uh, step in the um, for in Chicho, of course, is the hut slide. Uh, might need some coaching on this, guys, because I'm still uh, I still put both of my feet together when I do this. Um, <coughs> actually, uh, Gary, would you mind um, just doing a, a verbal description and uh, or just a, a narration, just a, a brief narration of the hut slide, and I'll, I'll act it out as you as you talk about. It. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I mean, basically, what you're doing with the hut slide is you're lifting your front foot up, and then sort of from there. It, you, your back foot kind of powers you forward so that your front foot gains distance and then it, your back foot, as your front foot lands, your back foot pulls in sort of behind it. So you, you, you really shouldn't end up with a situation where the two feet end up together because your front, you know, you lift your, it's, it, the way Mass Anonymous usually explains it is it's a bit like a spring and as soon as you lift your front foot up, it makes the back, the spring in your back foot work. So that pushes you forward, and then your back foot kind of follows. Exactly exactly what you're doing there, Eric. So it literally just follows. So it's kind of front foot first, and then the back foot slides in behind it. Um, I think possibly the name is, is descriptive of kind of the movement of a, you know, if you think of Jabba the Hutt, when he was more able to move around. It is that kind of sliding forward. So yeah, exactly what you were doing there. Front foot comes up, that goes forward, and then your back foot pulls in behind. I just realized something. Uh, in Empire Strikes Back, those are the first two moves Luke does against his father before he even knows it's dead. Yeah. yeah. He does two hut slides, and was it just two steps or two hut slides? You can't really see the feet, but it's kind of that idea, just kind of a, a whoosh forward, uh, which. Uh, yeah, 
And interestingly, um, the, the so it's fight less of a jump and more of a slide. It is, yeah. It's it, again, it's keeping quite low to the ground. So you're not really picking one foot up and you know several inches. You're keeping probably an inch from the ground the whole time. You're trying to keep fairly low as you, as you move because the higher you pick the foot up, the easier it is to be off balance. It will rip up your grass. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Or or plow a furrow in it, as I know Michael has found out. I love it. So the hut slide did take a while for me to learn. Um, I don't know why I struggle with these things, but I do. But once I get them, it's it's a wonderful feeling. I make homebrew too, just on a side note, so I know how to celebrate. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, I digress. So, uh, one thing about the uh, the hut slide as well about that, the reason why you want to keep it so low is uh, just to actually maintain control because if you're doing a whoa, no do a hut slide. You can still back out of it, mm. just in case. Um, Actually, one one good little thing um, you mentioned uh, before about Luke in Empire Strikes Back. If you watch uh, Obi Wan Kenobi and Vader in uh, in uh, Episode Four, it, you see a lot of hut sliding. There's a lot of that kind of almost creeping forward on each other. Um, so it, it it's there as well. You know, it's it's a it's it's a very useful move for just sort of maneuvering around. Right. Uh, does uh, anybody have any uh, questions about the uh, the slide? Yeah, I have a I have a question. When you're stepping with your front foot, are you uh, landing with your heel? Because <laughs> it looks similar to something what we do in uh, modern fencing. Yeah, actually, um, it's, so it's I, I basically just I, I don't actually change anything on my feet. What I'm doing is, is just kind of lifting up and, and pushing off the back a little bit. Just basically to, instead of flat out just dragging my feet forward, it's just basically lifting it up and almost sliding like that. Yeah. So your feet don't really change much. It just. I, I, I think, Russell, what you're trying to say is do you land on the, on the front foot when you put it? Do you land on the, on the heel or the, the ball? Heel, yeah. um, I roll with the heel into the ball. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I'm are, are you talking about your, your lunging step in fencing? Yes. I land actually on the front of my foot, just to, just to put it back where it usually uh, stands. Sort of, it's kind of a... I get there. See, both heel and front of the foot feel okay for me. So it's I, I kind of catch myself not being too consistent about that. Um... Sometimes I slip too. It's kind of cool. Okay, so it's that wet grass of yours, Eric. <laughs> too dark. Let's see if I can adjust this. Might have to do it here. Oh boy. Okay. Hey, it gets dark in the northern hemisphere at this time of year, huh? <laughs> so, um, yeah. Okay. So, any other uh, questions about the um, the hut slide before we move on? Right. So, uh, next one, uh, the other stance in um, in Chicho, we have the um, the dewback, uh, the dewback rider, and what you got to do can't do for the dewback is basically pretend you're riding a big fat dewback, whatever the heck that is, um, and I guess dewback riders rode these things and slashed from the top of them, I don't know. Um, so yeah, just a, a forward-facing squat stance uh, that you wanna that you wanna do. Get an idea. Hopefully this will work. Um, yeah, it's nothing, uh, nothing too special about the do back there. So, uh, but it, um, it's it, uh, anybody, um, Gary, uh, chime in about the do back. There's, it's only really used at the uh, the end of the do line, isn't it? Yeah, it it, com it comes in right towards the end, just before, pretty much just before the last strike. 
and you sort of mo you are moving into a kind of a sideways position and then striking out to your right hand side and cover you know covering your face with the other hand. So it is it is very much a kind of a side on a side on stance. Again, um, you know, if, if with with obviously the panel having you know several of them having martial arts backgrounds, they'll have seen similar kinds of stances in their own styles. Not good for Andy at lighting up here. Jeez, okay. uh, guys, um, it might dropped out really quick. <laughs> might have to uh, drop the lamp right on the ground here in a moment here just to show this. Um, but uh, let's, um, yeah. If there's no more questions about uh, footwork. Um, I know it was kind of basic, but those are basic steps, and uh, those are the ones that you use in the Dulon. Did we miss any uh, from the Dulon? Nope. nope. No, I think we're good. So we got that. Um, so uh, let's move on to the guards then. Sorry, I'm just going to. I wish uh, these webcams went sideways for the film. Uh, mine doesn't anyway. Um, it would be much, much better to, to be able to show you the footwork right now, but I have to take both of the slides so I see uh, get that uh, next time. But, um, <laughs> uh, so we'll start with the guards. The, uh, just with that first uh, set of, st uh, the first stance uh, would be the back foot, um, I guess the, the right foot back and the left foot forward. Um, you grip your saber. Um, I don't know. It's uh, grip it firmly. And sorry, you got him finally. Uh, yeah, just get a good grip on it. And I don't know. I uh, wish wish I could remember exactly what uh, Master Vornok said, but um, I don't know. I think for Shicho guys, do they prefer uh, a wider grip or a shorter grip, or does it really really matter with Shicho? If I recall what was mentioned, they want the, the front hand is close to that emitter, as comfortable, and right on the pommel. They want that big, wide grip. And the way they explain it is as you swing it, you're trying to pull this thing apart, which gives you your full power in your swing. Pull it apart. And then... You betcha. Goes right down. Feels like you... you uh, Next time I uh, I chop wood, I'm, I'm definitely a try cheat cho style instead of <laughs> chopping it with a axe, yeah, like a sucker. Um, just would look good, wouldn't it? Um, okay, so the uh, so you got your for forward guard. Uh, I guess we should talk first of, before we get into the guards. Uh, talk about the body and uh, the parts of the body. So the, the zones of the body, I should say, um, basically around the uh, the head. That is zone one. Um, in your saber hand, uh, we'll start with your uh, the non-saber hand. That's your zone two. The enemy's uh, non-saber hand is also two. So your two is actually crossing over to your enemy's two. So you know that confused me for about a month. Um, your saber hand, and this uh, this area here. Uh, sorry, zone two is is all the way around. On this side, zone three is the same way, but on this side, your dominant or saber hand. I'm getting eaten alive out here, by the way. Sorry about that. Um, in the in the body area, that is your zone four. So we, so far we have one, four, and we got two and three. And then down below two is zone five. Is that right? Oh my goodness. It's the, the the confusing thing about this is is trying to think about your zones and your opponent's zones as well. Um, I think I kind of remembered it the opposite way onto you actually, Eric. In that so much that your saber hand is two, your yeah. off hand is three, your saber dominant leg is five, and your off one is six. If if I've got that right. That's correct. Okay, thanks, man. It's on my poster in the garage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so um, thank you. 
So, yeah, and then uh, you got your two legs, which are the uh, zones uh, five and six. And once again, so we got two, three, and then saber hand is five, and then off, off hand Indeed, is uh, yeah. six. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Cool. Thanks, guys. Okay, so when we talk about a, uh, a three to six strike, that'll be going from up here to down here. Uh, or a zone four strike, which is probably a shia. Uh, right through the middle. Uh, same with the uh, the zone one, shiak to the head, and uh, so, and uh, you can do a zone uh, uh, a zone six attack, which will be down on your opponent's off leg, zone five, the other way. Um, turn this off. So uh, let's start with the other guards. So you're forward uh, just off to your zone uh, three, with the blade facing up. That is the basic Jedi guard, and that's what the, uh, the the nice spread leg stance, left foot forward, right foot back, ready to either go forward or backward at a moment's notice, uh, or do the uh, three point step. Anyway, uh, if you do switch up the stance, <coughs> excuse me. There we go. If you switch up the uh, the stance. Um, you'll now be blocking. Uh, it's like a reverse Jedi guard. Um, you can also hold. The and then you have the inverted guard. So same uh, same situation. So your hands just stay the same the entire time, right? They don't like, switch up or anything. Oh yeah. Uh, with pretty much all of these moves, you can keep your your hands very firmly on your saber. Um, you should keep your hands firmly on the saber. And then switch switch your stance, and that changes the guard. Of course, do it to the middle, and then you have your your high guard, which is uh, with the left foot forward. the The saber hilt goes to your right or zone three, and the blade goes across zone one over into zone two. And the importance of of keeping the blade in front of your face, but uh, above you, is because if they hit you, you got the strong of the blade to take all of that impact, and you're, you're ready for anything. Switch the stance, and you can do it the other way. And this, uh, I mean, this just, I love this block very much. This just feels solid, as, solid as anything. It's just an awesome block. But, uh, so how high, so it's about, right about here on your head, I guess? Uh, it yeah. Like uh, so, okay. so I'm just, I'm standing normally right now. Um, the camera is here. I'll go camera eye level. Um, so it's it's just here. It's basically just between your your soft vital part of your head, <laughs> which is you know it's instant death if one of these things if it hits you. Um, yeah, stop that instant death. It's uh, use the strong of the blade, no matter which way you're facing. In a in a sparring situation, do you keep the Blade parallel to the ground, or do you like to give, or do you give it a little angle to let the blade, the opponent's blade, slide off? Or in sparring in situations, I don't use forms. <laughs> there's, there's no. It, it's funny the, the forms melt away in, in actual combat. Um, so, uh, well, so far, I mean, I think when we get better, we can actually. I think we'll be using these things, but for now, when uh, when I did some uh, some sparring against uh, Master Anonymous, yeah, no, it was it was killer be killed. Um, good thing we were wearing gear. There's, well, you know, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's policy, and we, we don't have a choice to wear gear. We, we do it because we don't want to die. I can see why we wear gear after fighting Master Um It's awesome, but no, there was no no time to figure out which one to do. It was get his out of the. Oh, he hit me. Wow. Uh, okay, try again. Uh, yes, I blocked. Bah, ah. Oh, yeah, keep going. Okay, yeah, right. Um, so. <laughs> Really, maybe later we'll incorporate some of these. Uh, in, I, I can see the theory behind it, but um, I, I never actually used it in a. There's, there's so, no Eric, uh, what else do we have for for guards? That's it's that simple. Um, there's the do bat. You know, I mean, the other one I'm thinking of is from Gem Soul. Uh, mm. you have your, of course. I'm sorry. Good idea. Um, thanks, uh, Robert. <laughs> you have your. Um, Center your uh, your high guard, which is the Jedi stance. You're blocking your legs. So you block, block, 
reverse the stance, and you can uh, parry low. And that's good because that's the beginning of the side strike as well. So uh, you'll notice a lot of these guards literally turn in directly into strikes. Um, very important to note that. This thing is, is very one right after the other if you want. Uh, any guard can almost instantly turn into a strike, like which... Well, which is why they had to make six other forms to fight it. <laughs> so, um, questions or comments so far? Nope. Doing pretty good for time here. Good. Uh, yeah. So, now that you know how to defend yourself, initiates, it's time to uh, it's time to show you how to send some of the punishment back. Oh yes. Sith or those Jedi, if you're a Sith. Um, yeah, we take all kinds of guys. Um, we call them opponents on either side. Like that video game. It doesn't matter which side you you play on. You're always the good guys. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, let's uh, start out with uh, again with our Jedi guard. And uh, the first major and first thing you ever learn. With Chicho is the Psy Strike. I'm going to back this up a little bit. I know it's uh, dark out here, but. Uh, Lipping pitch black. Lightsabers work better in the dark anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, they cut better in the dark anyway. That's why they always turn the lights off. Ambient light back here. I don't know if that's going to work or not, but. Um, yeah, it kind of tricks the camera a bit. That's kind of cool. Okay, doing the best we can, gents and ladies. Um, so, we have the, um, again, the Jedi Guard. So, with the side strike, what you do is you bring the foot in again. That, that's that uh, three, uh, three step, the three step, uh, you can't see this, I'm sorry. The three step, and as you do, you bring it into a high guard. So, blocking one and uh Zones uh, one and two, and then as you step forward, you come around and bring it down, and uh, and then pretty much uh, right here at the hips. Don't over rotate. Um, basically, you just want to carry through with what your leg does. Uh, so bring it up, and as you step forward, that's where the power comes from. And if you had to, you could bring it right back up again. So. Uh, I'm actually moving really slow. I'm not lagging right now. So uh, it looks like I'm, it, it, it's really slow motion. It looks like the video's doing it. But again, you got your sign. I'll, I'm going to do two in a row, uh, left and a right. So we'll go up. And then back, bring your feet together. And bring it down again. And remember, again, when you do it the opposite way, the best way to think about it is, Whatever way you're going to slash, that's the way your saber goes up into the guard. So I'm going to bring it down like this. I'm going to bring it down like this. So as I'm standing here, I step in. My saber points that way. It goes around and smash the bulldozer. And then uh, it's the opposite way when you go the other way. So you bring it down together. Notice how the saber goes that way, and that's the way I'm going to swing. Step into it. Right. So that's the side. Uh, any question about the side? Um, when you're spinning it around your head, do you almost want to keep it like a hanging guard behind your back, like completely vertical? Uh, yes. Um, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you like the, the matrix effect. So as I'm starting in, you go up, and then as you're bringing it in, it goes around, and then as you bring it down, you step forward, and then it goes down to the hip. I don't know if that made any sense. I looked like me spinning in a circle. Uh, I don't know. Was that, did that make any sense? Yeah, it got the, it got the point across. <laughs> Thanks, man. That was kind. <laughs> Um, any uh, any questions, uh, Lacey? 
No, I think he answered the one question that I had. <laughs> yeah. It's uh yeah, it's so that's that's the main one, guys. But usually, if, if everything goes really well for you, it's pretty much going to be the only strike you're going to have to make in theory. Let's hope. We want to. We don't want to fight all day. <laughs> so, um, okay. So we got the. Um, so do you want to go? What do you think, guys? Uh, side. Uh, I would like to add that sometimes when I do the side strike, when I bring it around, I actually feel like I'm pulling the saber over my shoulder to get more power out of the strike. I'm literally using this front hand and pulling the saber down across. It gives me more power. It makes me feel like I'm making more effect with the saber. You're right. And it just, it just brings it down. I know what you mean. Yeah, just you're right. It, well, it does. It's uh, it's also using your core and, and everything else. So uh, that, that's a good thing to add to, to what I showed you guys. <laughs> kind of that I didn't mention. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, man. Michael. Yeah, I would like to add um, the importance of uh, footwork, of uh, stability of your lower half when you're doing the side strike. It's so important, and uh, you generate the power actually from from having a solid base and, uh, the, the, and, the, and the, the ending of the strike when you get into the, the stance. Uh, I, I uh, had the advice of Master Anonymous, who is here in the panel, by the way, Eric. Oh. <laughs> um, Did you sneak in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, the advice that helped me along was um, when you get into that stance, you think of tearing the ground apart with your feet, so you are really, really in a solid stance, and uh, that's something very important for me when I'm doing the side strike. Yeah, you don't want to feel really off helped balance. me along. When you bring down the hammer, you don't want to feel uh, you don't want to feel off balance. Um, okay, so uh, we'll go to the uh, we. I just did side. So um, the next one would be a choke strike, which uh, is uh, reversed. Okay. So, uh, all right, here we go. Okay, so uh, starting in a in a low position, what you want to do is again step in, but end in a uh, a high guard. So start down. We're we'll gonna start with the basic one first. So you have a low, start in a low guard. And then as you step in, it's just one step forward, sweep. All right? All right. Good. So just one step, no, um, no uh, touch the feet together, and then up. If you wanted to, you could do the, uh, I suppose. In this case, it's uh, I think it's the blade that leads. Uh, if I may jump in here, yeah. Um, the the way I, I can probably simplify, but we've been watching here. It's been going pretty good. Very good job here. But um, let me simplify it here for all of the initiates um, who are kind of going through here. Um, there was a little bit of a confusion here with terminology earlier on, where I think we're confusing parries and guards. In Shicho, there are only three guards. There are low, it's a middle guard, high guard, and low guard. And that's right along your center line. Those are the only guards that we're going to be testing you on. So there's no Jedi guard, there's no any of that. Oh. All of these positions here are parries, and they're going to be covering your, your various zones. So you have two directions which you can cover your, your zone one. You've got your drop parry to cover zone three and two. You've got your just regular back and forth parries that way, and then you've got your low parries from low guard. <clears throat> so you basically just got your three levels. The three strikes are talking really about amplitude of what of how much power you're using. So a side strike is going to be a full on full arc all the way swinging through. Now that can go up or down. You're going to do honor sash which is the downward so chose or uh, side strike and the honor sash for side goes from the lead shoulder to the rear hip right 
the honor sash for Cho goes from the opposite shoulder or the rear shoulder to the front hip. Okay, and the difference there is that's just basically how much arc of the strike you're getting. Okay, so uh, Sai is full power, just trying to chop through something. Cho is, you know, trying to do a lot of damage, but not necessarily over committing to the strike. And then lastly, you have Shim, which is the real quick type of stuff. All of these need to be able to be practiced up, down, sideways, backward, forward. And all that kind of thing. These are general concepts. Don't get too bent up in the little details of, of, of the little things. The accelerations that we do, which are the exercises, are more of the things like the videos that we have out going over the three strikes. We have the side strike. We have the Cho strike and all of that. An upward side strike is going to end in a little bit of different way than a Cho strike as far as the Sarlacc sweep goes, but for that, so downward, honor sash, upward, Sarlacc sweep. I, I wanted to get in there and make sure that that terminology was clear so that people didn't, you know, start memorizing too much, right. you know, <laughs> out, out there or anything like that. So yeah, any of these things here, if I take, if I take my saber right here, and to answer your your answer uh, or your question, Russell, yes, it's always good to have a little bit of a downward angle to your to your parries overhead because you want a little bit of a grazing action, even if it's not going to stop it, it's going to redirect it off to the side. Um, the drop parry, of course, is is much different than this one here, even though they might look kind of similar in in that way, right? Mm -hmm. So we ge generally say from middle guard you can do drop parries or just to the side. Hopefully that'll... Uh... Oh, that, that makes it a little easier. <laughs> Thanks, man. No cool. problem. Awesome. Okay, so we're just, okay, just, uh, I guess we're just doing zonal, not even zonal attacks, just uh, high, medium, and low. Okay, good. Uh, so that makes it a little bit easier. So it's basically know your your area and I guess know how to uh, know how to guard. Okay, uh, so we did the uh, the strikes. Uh, yeah, I guess that was uh, that was awesome. Uh, thanks again, uh, Master Ramos. Uh, anybody have any questions? Though? On the ch on the Cho strike. Uh, or yes, uh, or yes. Okay. Uh, on to Joe. Oh, no, I was just wondering what we were, what we were on. Yep. Yep. So we just did Sai and then uh, then Joe. Okay. Okay. So, yep. Just like uh, yeah. Well, just like uh, Master Anonymous said, the uh, you got the Sarlacc sweep, which is the reverse of the uh, reverse of the Sai. And then the, the medium strike would be, I guess, the um, that would be the. Uh, Okay. Well, with Cho, if you're doing it, if you're doing it in, um, if you're gonna do the Psy Sarlacc sweep, you end in Jedi Guard standing up, like in the form, um, in the Dulan, and then if you're doing Cho, you end in Dubak Rider. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. So, so, standing in, uh, so standing in Jedi Guard. My feet are always ending uh, in that uh, T stance that I showed at the beginning. So, so we'll start starting in the do-back rider. Is it supposed to really go back that far? Well, it's you're supposed to go to do-back rider, your upper body, your upper body is here, right, just like this. And then you're 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 sitting in the middle down in Dubeck Rider or, or in if you're doing martial arts ma, uh, horse stance. That would be the Cho variation of it. For the for the Psy variation of it, you come all the way up and then bring your feet together so you're in a standing position to get the full arc. Cool. 
I see what you mean. It, it continues on when you do that. Uh, so. See that in. And so that's just the uh, that's the low cho. There's 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 going to be a uh, a middle height and a I guess an up or downward cho along with the low cho. Yeah, you downward you just do you would just do honor sash, but you do it instead of going to your rear hip where you can get the full size slash, you go to your forward hip here so you get more of a percussive chop. Okay. Right. All of these strikes can be done at any angle. It's just a matter of control and focus and where you end the strike. How much right. power goes into it? How much commitment is determined by the type of strike? Right. So it's almost like it's what happens after the strike is delivered, which is more important to think about. Okay. I'm, I like to think of it this way. Your size strike is a full commitment. You're sticking it all right out there because you know your blade ends up right back behind your hip. So you've got nothing out in front of you guarding you. That Cho strike, it, it's, it's similar to the same strike, but you're ending at your hip. You're keeping that control. You're keeping that blade forward. The third strike, which Eric's about to demonstrate, is going to be your, your shim and shiak strikes, your short ones, your, your little itty-bitty ones. that they're, they're, they're fencing strikes, essentially. Just quick damage, quick get in, quick get out. Do you want to narrate, Robert? I can do that. Go ahead. Thanks, Dave. It's, uh... Right. Yeah, and and then those are your those are your shiak strikes. They're basically thrusts, and and they're they're done by pointing the tip at the target and then raising your lightsaber into it. It's um, it's like stabbing someone, and you can do it to any point in the body, arms, uh, number four, your chest. It's really big. It's really easy to get to. Um, even from time to time, you can do a shiak to the head. When you say pointing your lightsaber at the time of kind of raising it, like raising the tip into it, does that mean like you're holding it up like that, or does that mean well, that you? What I'll do is I'll, I'll take the lightsaber. I'm going to back up a bit, and I will point it, and then I will thrust it at its target. Um, I won't. I won't take the the sword and directly focus it forward. Um, I will take the tip and basically look at my target across the tip, and then make sure that the front of my saber hits right where I'm aiming for. It's a good way to aim your... A good way to think about it is just kind of like where you rotate. Like if I rotate from here, I'm going to be hitting with the side of the blade here, so with an edge. But if I set the tip, and then I use the tip as the rotation point, and I do the same motion like this, that becomes a thrust, because if I set the tip here, when I bring it forward, it goes through the target. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Much better way to explain it. Thank you. And then you've got your shims, which are your, your light strikes to any target. Um, they're very light committal. Uh, they're also not designed to... Uh, you know, they're not going to cut a whole bunch of things in half, but for a lightsaber, you just need to make contact. A light tap is just as devastating as getting chopped, so, and that's why the, the shim is such an effective weapon on a lightsaber. Um, and it can be directed at any point on the body. Uh, usually it's extremities, arms, legs. Um, that's that's the shim strike. So are you are you using the hilt as like a lever, like between the between the two? It's like. You're creating this like fulcrum between. Them. Yes, I exactly that. You're you're basically using that hilt and reaching out and tapping your target. Your control, your your front hand will basically hold the saber while you're angling it in with your back hand. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 exactly a lever. You know, any t any type of kind of lever action that you're doing, that that's what you're doing. So the harder. And the faster you can get this motion going, the better your spin strikes are going to be. And those are your bread and butter when we're talking about lightsaber combat. 
<clears throat> right. So when you're actually talking about traditional lightsaber combat, the shims and the shiax are where you're actually going to do your damage. Um, it, no one's going to commit to a lightsaber duel with a, a, a size strike. It's way overextending, and it's completely unnecessary. Yeah, there's only. There, I mean, the only way you do it is if you were afforded that opportunity in the midst of combat. Um, but you know, generally speaking, yeah, <laughs> nobody's. If you're talking about a dueling situation, which we're going to be talking about a lot, where you got two people with lightsabers doing it, they're totally not going to be <laughs> wanting to open themselves up like that, holding the uh, three feet of blazing plasma. Um, and that's pretty much the three strikes. You got your Psy strikes, your Cho strikes, and your Shim and Shiak strikes. And the real difference between them is um, power, commitment, um, what your attention is drives what these strikes do. Okay, guys, uh, we, um, we do have some questions on the board, too. Uh, did you want to get to those? Uh, we are uh, running out of time here. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, well, well, how about uh, Eric uh, Tobruk says, is there a better situation to use a drop parry as opposed to a regular zone two-thirds parry, or is it just user preference? Oh, the, the, it depends on what you intend to do after the parry. Um, if you're just trying to block the strike, they're both effective. But if you have uh, created an opening with a drop parry, um, that that's really it. Yeah, right, Master I mean, Anonymous? Yeah, you can totally do that. It depends on if you're going to come around, you can do it. You're probably going to do a drop parry more often if you want to come after, if you want to repost from overhead. So if I parry a strike and I want to come down on the person's head, I'll do a drop parry so that I can pull the pull the saber down uh, this way. Um, so if I go up here, it makes it easier for me to pull it down into a downward strike thusly. Um, if I do this, this offers me a lot more speed, a lot more agility. I can kind of, I don't know, range my opponent a little better. So if I want to do this, if I want to start getting into quick little shim strikes and start wearing them down and stuff like that, or if I just want to see what they got, this is definitely all you need. I mean, just boom, 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 boom. That is the quickest, probably most high percentage parry you're, you're going to have. Okay, Eric, we got any other questions, sir? Let's see. Okay, um, let's, let's see. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks very much, guys. Um, why is my violet amethyst turning red? Ah. Yep. <laughs> I had that problem too. I had to change the batteries. Yeah, yep. that's a battery issue. That's also a kind of a running form joke. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, yes, okay. So does uh, Shim teach better control than Sai or Cho? Um, I think I can answer that one. Uh, it again depends on what you intend to do. Um, if if you want to, uh, if you have to get a quick strike in, again, we just talked about how a little one or a big one, it's still going to do a lot of damage. Um, an opening with a bigger strike, you take it, why not? Uh, it's really what whatever pre uh, presents itself to you. Um, I got that point. Um, but does uh, we, uh, Shiak does teach, I guess, blade control. Um, Master, uh, did, would you, uh, again, agree that uh, it just the, the shorter things, uh, not these huge, wide-arcing destructive slashes, but it is the, uh, the, the shorter strikes that actually uh, benefit a little bit more for control? I would say that you have to bring control to everything that you do. Um, a size strike is going to have two points of control, the beginning and the end. You have to get the thing moving, and then you have to stop it. All right? And those are, the, those are those two areas. If you want really good strikes, that, that the area in between those two points should be relaxed and it make that nice whooshing sound. Um, shim, obviously... It depends on what you mean by control. Can you control an opponent better with it? Definitely, because it's quicker, it's you know, far more versatile. Um, but that's going to depend on your situation. Are you in a dueling situation? Are you in a battlefield situation? A battlefield situation is entirely different, right? where you have lots of people fighting all around you. It's just complete chaos, and you just have to kind of 
move from one thing to the other, you don't actually necessarily want to finish anything. So um, <clears throat> there's there's aspects of control in every strike, and I think that it's a control that we have to bring to our practice, not necessarily to any one thing. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, is that is it okay if we go into like a, maybe a five uh, five ten minute overtime here, uh, just to briefly discuss uh, velocities, accelerations, and just the dulon, just talk about them. Uh, is that okay, guys? Yeah. It's, uh, yep. It's not like people on YouTube uh, really. Oh, I gotta go. No, it's a uh, it's YouTube video. <laughs> it will be anyway. Um, so yes, it'll be up later. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so the uh, for velocities. Uh, what uh, what velocities are used for? Um, they're basically used for uh, just doing uh, repetitive motions. They're usually used with uh, multiple opponents. Like if you, you usually do this in partners, but uh, we're in exile here, so it doesn't always work out that way. You can still do velocities uh, on your own. So uh, one uh, type of velocity uh, you could do is, is pretend that you're just doing a, a left right, uh, just with uh, with shim strikes. So just a uh, so left, right, left, right. That's just the simplest one right there. Left, right, and then maybe step back. Left, right. Another one you could do, and pretend the other guy is doing the uh, the opposite thing every time. Uh, you could also do a left, right, and then down. Left, right. Or yeah. So too high and then back it up too low. But do keep in mind that the, the, the velocities which we will be testing you on with the trials are the three that we've posted, the Nucleus, the Kessel Run, and uh, three of each. Ah, cool. Okay. Uh, uh, knew it. I knew I forgot to look at something. Uh, <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Master Radio, uh, do you, would you recommend just the, the videos online? Um, yeah, the videos online. The velocities are two-person exercises. They are um, essentially like little choreographed fights, but they're repetitive in nature. Um, they, they have them in other martial arts and everything like that, and they basically train responses so that you get used to seeing somebody coming in with this type of an attack, and you get used to preparing an appropriate response. Um, the way we use them is that <clears throat> you can actually split them up into solo forms so that each person is doing, or one person is doing each side, because they're both pretty, in Shicho they're identical, each side is identical, so they kind of fit together um, in that way. Thank you. Okay, so, um, so yes, uh, initiates. Uh, Definitely uh, check out the videos uh, on that. Um, do you think um, I'll I'll dig them up and uh, and post them on the thread or something like that? Uh, if you're an initiate, you'll have access. So uh, next, uh, we'll just talk briefly about the uh, the accelerations. Um, anybody uh, wanted to step in briefly uh, with that? Just, uh, just talk about it quickly. Um, Gary. Well, the, yeah, I mean, I think this is where some, sometimes the confusion comes in, is the, is the two terms, velocities and accelerations. What you were describing before, which is, in a sense, is taking one move. I mean, a good example is, is the, um, of one of the accelerations is using the on a sash side strike and just moving that forward, coming around yourself and striking and then coming around the other side, doing the same thing. They're like little small pieces that work a specific technique. You know, so that you you can I mean you can pretty much do them with with any of the techniques, be it the side, the cho, the shims, um, but you you're just working a very sort of small area of technique and doing it repetitively, rather than what was happening with the velocities, which is a series of of moves. So it's a little bit more complicated than than just taking one technique and repeating it. And um, and uh, master, are there any uh, set uh, accelerations that the um, the uh, uh, initiates should be studying? Well, just the ones that go with the uh, with the strike. So the honor sash, the sarlacc sweep, and then the six ones, the uh, sai cha, the destroy the sun gem sai cha, destroy the weapon, 
sever the head. Um, so you're basically doing you're basically doing them in each plane. I just remember, Mu King is dark Maul. <laughs> Right. Yeah, and don't worry. Ne don't necessarily worry about the marks of contact. The marks of contact will probably come in later when we start getting into sparring and stuff like that. That's we don't normally put that stuff on the trials. So. Okay. Thank you. And then um, just briefly talking about the Dulon. Um, the Dulon, everybody, is is what um, you will be striving for in uh, in all of the forms. Um, the um, of course uh, the masters have the curriculum Dulon. Uh, that's what we are all working on right now and various stages. And all of the material is definitely online. And that's what we're using to study right now. Um, so, you know, um, what, what happens to us apprentices is, um, is we, we basically feed off of each other and, uh, and our, just critique each other and feedback each other. And, and that's how we, uh, we're growing now. So it's kind of getting there and getting there. And then once you're in, boom, it just explodes. And uh, so now we're really focusing on the, uh, the curriculum stuff. So. The way to do that is watch the videos, and uh, they're, they're very well explained. Um, definitely take a look at the uh, the Sheet Show official TPLA Dulan, and what it is, it's basically an exposition, um, a choreographed exposition, if you will, of all of the all of the moves and guards that you would uh, find in the, uh, the particular form. At least. So it's just a, a sort of a choreographed uh, showcase of any given form. Uh, Master Anonymous and Master Warnock, uh, every all the masters have, uh, have, have come up with uh, it, is, it is pretty cool. So it, it, everything is uh, just kind of demonstrated. So are yes, duons yes. necessary in the uh, in the trials, uh, Master? Yes, yes. yes. Dulans. I mean, if we're talking about learners in exile, forms. Dulan, we call them in in lightsaber. Uh, kata, called in Japanese. Um, Daolu in Chinese. These sets, these sets of movements, shadow boxing in English. Um, what what they really are is how we practice without a partner. Um, most sets are going to be of a certain length. They're usually of about engagement length. They're about the length of a fight, a long fight, a short fight, or whatever. But they very rarely go beyond that. <clears throat> So they place the same kind of physical demands on the body that being in combat would. The exaggerated postures, the lower stances, the, the more fluid movement and everything like that adds that extra bit of physicality, which in a very, very way, and as somebody who both fights and does these forms, um, it's a very similar feeling. That you, that you get when you when you can um, push yourself in in Dulan, um, as we call it. So <clears throat> yeah, it is very necessary because that's kind of the whole thing of the program. We're going to be doing that. Um, it isn't necessarily the key portion of it. You don't necessarily have to practice Dulan. You can get away with doing the exercises and the drills, the accelerations, the velocities, and all that kind of stuff. And don't be under any illusions also that doing any of these exercises by yourself at all prepares you for doing it with somebody else. Um, these are ways to get ourselves prepared. The only way to learn how to fight is to fight. Just to get in there with somebody who is uncooperative, um, gear up so you don't have to worry about injuring each other, and you go at it. You say, okay, this is what I think will happen. Let's see if that actually happens. Sometimes it will, sometimes it will not. Um, and then you, you keep making those decisions and you know those those little things as you go on and you build up that experience that way. Thank you. Hey. Um, wow. Yeah, it made, it made, that makes a lot more sense to me now. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, this, uh, are there any uh, last um, last minute comments or uh, or questions from the the panel? Uh, anybody, right across the board. Uh, we'll start with uh, Gary. Um, no, I mean, I, th I think to be honest, you know, it's it's all been sort of covered pretty well, really. I think it's just, you know, as we've we've said numerous times before, I think it is just a case of um, just, you know, prepare, go for it, um, make sure you check out the material online, 
and 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 just have fun with it and enjoy yourself really and 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 you know when your trial comes through just 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 have a blast with it really absolutely yeah it ain't nothing if it ain't fun huh uh, watch, watch the watch the videos. Yes, and uh, and uh, fire the questions you have on the Facebook uh, groups. You uh, be sure to 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 ask for anything you need before you enter the trials. And uh, yeah, good luck to all. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to just add just was just to put out something to uh, Lacey and Russell here. Um, how do you feel a after this? Are you guys feeling psyched and ready for? For what's coming? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Excellent. Psyched and a little nervous. Well, have and, uh, fun with it. Have fun. Oh, yeah, man. And, and Robert, um, any uh, any last uh, closing words, sir? Absolutely. Um, you know, if it, it's it's fun. It's entertaining. It's exciting. It's it's designed to give you something to be proud of, and uh, you, you just swing a lightsaber, I mean, that's that's like the super up of this, so um, if you have any questions, don't wait, don't wait for our TPLA Live, just go out there, throw us questions, we love to answer questions, so uh, you take advantage of us, that's what we're here for, we're here to teach you, you're here to learn, it sounds like a deal, um, and trust me, we learn from you just as much as, as we learn from Master Anonymous and Master Vornok, so um, go for it. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, Master Anonymous, any uh, any closing uh, or parting thoughts? No, um, just good luck to all of the uh, initiates. Anybody who wants to join up, we're we're still accepting uh, applications, and uh, the whole process goes on until uh, the end the end of November. So we got some time. So uh, come on in, join the fun. And uh, check out the uh, TPLA um, if, uh, website. Um, actually, if you're on Facebook, uh, just uh, the Terra Prime Lightsaber, of course, if you haven't already joined. Uh, the instructions will be there. If anything, just ask us a question anywhere that you can find us. Um, right on the YouTube video here, if you have a, you have a question, just post a comment. So, uh, on behalf of, uh, of Master Anonymous and Terra Prime Live, uh, we thank you very much, uh, and the panel as well, uh, and you out there, of course, in the world, in the universe for joining us tonight, and uh, to our initiates. Again, uh, thanks, uh, Lacey. Uh, thank you, Russell, uh, for joining us tonight. And if you're an initiate watching, may the Force be with you, and good luck. And we'll see you next week here on uh, Terra Prime Live. All right. You guys have a great weekend. And we're live.